Hello, welcome to the first week of Library 1115, Introduction to Information Research. I am looking forward to getting to know you this semester, and I am excited to share some tips, tricks, and strategies to help you save time and to be more successful on your next research project. My name is Spencer Jardine, and I am the coordinator of library instruction in the Eli M. Obler Library on the Pocatello campus at Idaho State University. I have attended schools in Idaho, Utah, and Iowa, where my wife's family resides. I grew up in Ammon, Idaho, when it was a much smaller town. I enjoy learning, reading, camping, and exercising. As a librarian, I enjoy conducting research in the areas of information literacy, teaching, and reading. Leila Kuo and Janelle Galvezin are the teaching assistants for this class. However, you may interact more with Leila as she will be helping with this web course. Please contact them if you need assistance or clarification with assignments. They can help you. This is Leila's fifth semester working with me as a teaching assistant, and she knows what she is doing. She has a lot of experience taking courses online since her program is delivered entirely in this format. Many, if not all, of you are here to complete the general education requirement for Objective 8. This information literacy objective is defined as the ability to recognize when information is needed and to locate, evaluate, and use information effectively. Courses satisfying this objective must involve hands-on practice for students, rather than merely the presentation of theoretical principles. Each semester there is a large percentage of students in this class who are going into the nursing program. Let me be honest, I am biased in favor of reading books, using libraries, and the importance of research, but I recognize that many of you, if you had your druthers, would not have picked this class on your own. You are taking this class because you have to do so. In spite of the fact that you may not be thrilled to take this class, I invite you to jump in and see what you can learn. I have taught this class many times. In each semester, there are students who say things like, it should be required for all freshmen. I wish I had taken it as a freshman. In the end, I do hope that you can gain knowledge and skills that will serve you in the future. Last semester, one student volunteered the following quote, wherein she expressed her gratitude that she had learned strategies that will help her in the future. Let's think about the reasons why the School of Nursing requires a class on finding information. Why would they do that? A big reason is that nurses and health professionals in general need to be able to find, evaluate, and use information to make informed decisions about their patients, practice, and themselves. The idea of evidence-based practice is a big deal right now in the health professions. If a nurse or doctor cannot find the information, then they cannot do evidence-based practice. Some of you are not going into the health professions. However, you will also need to find, evaluate, and use information in your future career, not to mention in your daily life. So why bother? In today's society, everything is available on Google, right? Everyone uses it. Why do you need a class on finding information when you have a computer or smartphone with quick and easy answers? While Google does provide huge amounts of useful information freely and easily, there is so much of it that it is often hard to sift through and find what you want. Besides, Besides, as we all know, not everything on the internet is worth reading. In order to be successful with college research assignments, you need to develop the skills you will learn in this class. Also, the more you learn about where to go to find information, the less stressful it will be for your future assignments. You will be able to save time searching and spend more time refining your assignments. Professors appreciate papers that are well researched, and they show their appreciation by giving you good grades. Last but certainly not least is the fact that the more you feel comfortable searching for information, the more you will learn. Personally, I find this to be very satisfying, and I hope you will experience this kind of satisfaction too. LLIB 1115 Section 2 is entirely online. We will never meet together as a class, though you are certainly encouraged to meet me in my office. Office. Talk with me over the phone or Skype with me if you wish. All the lectures will be recorded. Discussions will take place in the Moodle forums. Quizzes and exams will, will be completed in the Moodle course. Remember that these assessments are open book, but they are not open classmate. Do not work together on quizzes and exams. Some assignments may allow you to work with classmates, but most of them you will be responsible for completing on your own. Read the syllabus for more details about the policies, the weekly schedule, and participation guidelines for the class. This week we want to get to know you. Please tell us a little bit about yourself in the Moodle discussion forum, such as your name, major, place of origin, etc. If you feel inclined, share with us something you enjoyed doing over the break and why you enrolled in this class. 
Also, after you have looked in the information literacy document and begun reading chapter one, briefly explain or define information literacy and or the history of information. Submit your initial post before Thursday at 11.55 p.m. Remember to reply to two of your classmates' posts before 11.55 p.m. on Sunday. Again, as a review, this class is designed to help you become more familiar with the library resources that will help you be more successful in finding quality information for your college research projects and future careers. Using information effectively to get something done involves summarizing, evaluating, and documenting information sources you encounter. This will be measured at the end of the semester with an annotated bibliography. The guidelines for this project can be found in the course syllabus. We also will discuss ethical and legal issues surrounding the sharing and use of information. That's when we talk about plagiarism, copyright, and publishing models. William Badke's book, Research Strategies, Finding Your Way Through the Information Fog is the required textbook for this course. You can purchase a copy in the ISU bookstore or online. If you buy the cheaper ebook version, you will be responsible for reading the correct pages. Along with page numbers, there are usually chapter or section numbers listed in the syllabus or Moodle. This should make it easy for you. Reading quizzes will open on Saturdays and close on Thursday nights. So they will be open a full week. Choose to purchase one of these two citation manuals as you will need to consult them in order to document or cite your sources. If you are going into the health sciences, choose the APA manual. You will be glad you did. If you live in the Pocatello area, you can check out the textbook from the reserves desk just inside the main doors of the Eli M. Obler Library. The citation manuals can be found at the reference desk. However, they must remain in the building. Post to the forums before Thursday and Sunday at 11.55 each week. Late posts will not be graded. There will be about three makeup weeks if you missed any posts. Work to stay on top of the discussion forums. This is where you can learn a lot from classmates and cement a lot of the learning. Reading assignments and watching lectures before posting will make it easier to have something meaningful to contribute to the discussion. Remember to post your assignments before Sunday nights at 11.55 p.m. We will talk more about assignments later, but once we get to finding sources, you can expect to talk about how you found the sources, what they say, and how good they are for your information needs, whether they answer your research question, in other words. Turn in your assignments on time to earn full points. A grade is not given, it is earned. If you have ever created a works cited or references list, then you have completed part of an annotated bibliography. The bibliography part is the works cited or references portion, while the notes about the sources cited is the annotated part. We will give you practice along the way to summarize the sources you find. No, I am not expecting you to read entire books on your topic. We will discuss strategies for finding the information you need quickly without taking that information out of context. You can do this, and you can even enjoy learning more about a meaningful and relevant topic of your own choosing. Look at the example shared in our Moodle course if you want to see annotated bibliographies other students have done in this class. Introduction to Information Research is a three credit class. Set aside two to three hours a week to watch videos and participate in the discussion forums. This is the in-class part of the three credits. Plan on four to six hours for reading the textbook, taking quizzes, and completing assignments. This is the out-of-class homework of a three-credit class. Students who have taken this class say that it is not hard, but it takes time. Keep up each week and move forward. You can do this. So, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Take a deep breath if you need to and go to work. You can do this. I'm here to help, so please email, call, or Skype me. My teaching assistants can also work with you, so keep them in mind. Thank you for your time and attention to this video. Have a good day, and we will see you in the forums.